What's up, everybody? This is the PSBS Podcast. I am your main host for this week, Andrew Arenas, PSN Double Is, along with my co-host here. Uh, Co-T, PSN, uh, Bayou Boys. Oh, yeah, that's had some time to think about that one. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm just uh, taking the reins of the podcast today, going over um, some of the news. I mean, really, for this week, um, there didn't really... There wasn't really much on the PlayStation front, but there has been some gaming-related news that will probably be a big deal for for PlayStation platforms. You know, we got some bundles, mm-hmm. some things that companies have said um, that are very important, and even uh, something that came that was much of a rarity. So we'll talk about those things. And uh, um, as for actually, someone inquired me for us to do actually the Batman Arkham Knight spoiler cast um i'm sorry to disappoint people i really haven't played much of batman arkham knight in the past week so i'm really only halfway done with the game so far um i'm not sure about you um, um how far i'm i'm almost there i'm like 70 percent total so okay so we got one inquiry about that so um we might need to get on that soon i think two weeks is pretty good so far i mean i'm not rushing through it so i'm really taking my time that was really i'll probably for it yeah, I mean, I'll probably at least have the story finished by the weekend, at least over this weekend. Ah, uh, ETA for me finishing it? Maybe mid-next week. <laughs> See, I already have it planned out. I might, maybe mid-next week. And plus, the other plus there of awesome PlayStation Plus games that came out oh, yeah. recently that I've been playing and trying out that we'll talk about soon. So, mm-hmm. enough with the teasing of what that's going to be in this episode. Um, yep. Alright, what do you have for us that you definitely want to yes. tell our people? Yeah, there is one news item I want to go over real quick before we dive into the topics and yeah. all the viewer mail and all that. Uh, there's one news item that caught my attention that I got really excited for. Um, it was announced this past week that Zero Escape Volume 3 is confirmed to be in development and will release um, in the first half of 2016. Now, is that the uh, Vita from, game? Yes, the Vita game. Yeah. Um, the reason why this is such a big deal is because... Um, uh, the original, well, not the original game, but uh, Zero Escape uh, Virtue's Last Reward was a PlayStation Plus game yeah. like a year ago or something like that on Vita. And that and is actually the following. second. Yeah, it definitely has a following. And it was the second game in a series, um, which I didn't know. I played the whole game. And I didn't even realize it was the second game in the series because uh, there was a first one that was only on DS. Yeah. Um, but they said the two stories, like, it gives you more background, but you don't need to play the first one because each yeah. one is kind of like its own story or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the big the reason it's such a big deal is because after um, Zero Escape Virtual Dash Reward uh, came out for Vita and 3DS, the developers said that they weren't developing a third one because they didn't have enough funding or whatever to make a third one. Mm. And it kind of seemed a little worrisome, like if we we're ever going to get another one. And it was confirmed this week that yes, a third one is in development to be released on Vita and 3DS. Um, uh, well, at first they said first half 2016. Now they kind of clarified and said probably you know next summer, so next year it'll be out. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is really exciting because I loved Zero Escape on Vita. So um, odds are it's probably going to be a purchase game that you would have to buy. Yes, the, I'm going to buy this one. I'm not going to wait for the. I'm not going to wait for the Plus version. No, but, well, not Plus version, but like for it to be free on Plus. Uh, well, yeah, you know, free on Plus time. is what I mean. It's yeah, what no, I mean. Ain't yes. no Drive Club here. Ain't no Drive Club. Yeah. Ain't no Drive, ain't no drive club. club here. Yeah, a lot but of things ain't no Drive Club. But um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah, great. Like I said I, yeah, like I said I love Zero Escape because I know it's not a game. For, it's not a game for everyone, you know. Yeah. Because it's it is like ninety percent story and ten percent gameplay. But I, not since Heavy Rain have I been so involved and just like addicted to a story where I was like, no, I got to see this play through, you know. Yeah, kind of like some RPGs where you make choices and the story is really engaging. Yeah, such a good game. I'm glad we're getting another one. Um, yeah, that's so great. We can see more of the story and all that good stuff uh, next year. So yes, we have a Vita game to look forward to next year. <laughs> oh. oh my god! <laughs> it's not from Sony Computer Entertainment, but that's okay. It's okay. It, it's, it's still Vita's super excited dead. for it. This game nope, we get that every week for the thing. Just about. Oh it. yeah, we get, yeah we get that Zero Escape next year. Yeah. Which but, is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Now, now that we got that out of the way, which is a yes. relatively big thing, since it is a Vita game that didn't need to be mentioned, and it's for PlayStation. Yeah, we um, got to hide those Vita games when we can. Exactly. Um, so, kind of maybe we're going off some small stuff. Um, this week, um, uh, Sony announced a bundle 
for the upcoming mm-hmm. Destiny expansion. Yes. Taking King. Now, um, what's different about this one, as opposed to the Destiny bundle we got last year, which came with the base game and uh, just the white, plain PS4, this one actually has a design to it. Yeah. It's yeah, neat. but uh, it's unfortunate that the controller doesn't seem to have a new design on it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, I'm not going to really waste my breath anymore on uh, just on the game itself, but, um, I mean, it's a neat design, one of the neater ones that has uh, come up on the PlayStation front. But, um, yeah. yeah, this will only be 500 gigs, so no one terabyte um, option, unfortunately. But um, maybe it's catering to the people that only play Destiny, but that's another thing. But... Um, yeah, it seems neat, I suppose, so I guess maybe anybody that missed out on that game last year can, uh, can get it, I guess. Um, yeah. so... Yeah, I mean, it goes with, like, the Batnet bundle where, like, now they're putting designs on top of it. Yeah, which is you know? awesome. Yeah, and that, I mean, nice. actually, I came across a Batman Arkham Knight bundle, um, where it, it actually comes with the game and it's the same price, $400, but it only comes with just a plain black PS4. Yeah, that's that's the regular bundle. But they got the super bundle that comes to like the designed. Uh, yes, PS4. that I would, that I would like. And uh, we've but, already went over in vast detail but, in past episodes of what other bundles we would like. And uh, yeah. I would like Sony but, to pursue those, please. Yeah. The Metal Gear, but the Metal Gear Solid one that's still not here in America yet, right? Yeah, that's unfortunate. And it looks that's really an awesome cool. looking one. That's an awesome looking one too. It is. But um. But I'm um, yeah. here in the states. As mean as this is probably to say, maybe their concern in the States maybe isn't Metal Gear to put out, even though Metal Gear will really sell well here. But I, I see them, as we said, a Battlefront bundle and a possibly guaranteed Black Ops 3 bundle. Yes, that's um, probably That good. is uh, very yeah. important. A Black Ops 3 bundle is looking very likely. I mean, there have actually been Call of Duty bundles in the past with the original Black Ops on PS3. Yeah, but a lot of those weren't until, like, after, yeah, after the initial the launch. Released, and they would come with, like, yeah. the first map pack. It was around the time when the first bits of DLC would come out for it. But this time, po- hopefully, since now with the partnership with Activision and Sony, and so if if the, if the if there can be bundles with that are big enough for just expansions on a game alone, even though it comes with the base game, I'm sure yeah. that with a big, large AAA release that, yes, is annual, annualized, but... Um, would actually make sense for Sony actually to do with their new partnership along with Activision um, with uh, Call of Duty. So um, yeah. it will really bring um, home the units this fall, especially since PS4 really has no exclusive games this uh, end of the year, unfortunately. Yeah. So I it mean, will really help out. Yeah, because I mean, it really seems like Sony is getting the same deal Microsoft had, you know, with Call of Duty. Like, oh, yeah, you they know, Map Packs 30 Days and all that. And yeah, Bundles is part of the deal. So I would assume, you know, they're going to work up so. the. Well, possibly bundle. this bundle can be a really awesome bundle and include a one terabyte option similar to Advanced Warfare last year. Oh, next week. Maybe. That'll be awesome. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully by next week's podcast, maybe they'll have it announced. Cause that, yeah, that, that, because Call of Duty's uh, having a presence at Comic Con. Yes, and they're going to announce the collector's editions over there. So that probably be something to announce along with the collector's edition. Like, hey, you can pre-order this collector's edition already if you already have a system. But if you need a system, hey, there's this cool Call of Duty bundle you can get also. Yeah. You know? And there is but, uh, also the um, reveal of zombies at Comic Con this week, which is going to be yes. neat. So we'll talk. Well, I'll go into a little bit of detail on um, what those the little deets are on that next week. Um, I am a big zombie fan of Call of Duty. Um, unfortunately, not the biggest fan of Advanced Warfare zombies uh, since uh, I just really can't get into it anymore, especially after the second map. So um, yeah. the regret of buying the season pass is almost getting to me, but. Um, aside from that, we have other things to talk about going along things. with uh, with a company that is also a shadow of their former selves, along with Konami and just and other old companies, is uh, Sega, which uh, they made some Sega. statements this week. The um, CEO, I just um, after several games, I have just bombed, and Sonic the Hedgehog is just a joke. Um, so <laughs> uh, boom. See, mm, <laughs> Luckily, those are not on PlayStation. Oh wait, is it? Yeah, isn't it? Is it? Was it no. on PS4? No, thank God. No, the no, the last, up, unfortunately, right? Yeah, the last like three or f- last three or so Sonic games were like exclusively on Nintendo platforms. That was like so, that was like a big deal. Nintendo made like we got to have some exclusive deal to make Sonic games on Nintendo platform. Like yeah, yeah you okay, got exclusive you got, turds. Yeah, you got the worst ones in the series. These to last date. three, and like the least selling, but yeah. um. 
I don't really have the exact quote here, as people have probably seen it online, of the CEO of uh, Sega, um, basically giving, giving statements for that really sound like someone that would actually take reins of the company now. Like, if it was a new CEO, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I looked up this dude. He's been here for a long time. Not the longest time, but he's been there for a while. And mm -hmm. the fact that he's just saying this now is really worrying. Is really getting to me because so now they're just focusing on the quality. Are they really going <laughs> to dial back? It's because so they so you're telling me that they haven't done that before and they just wanted to put out shovelware. Well, clearly that hasn't worked due to the fact that Sonic Boom was the worst selling in the franchise. So main game in the franchise, I should say. So yeah. it's like, ooh. And, you know, um, it's important, even though these games have graced Nintendo platforms, unfortunately, which is kind of good since they haven't graced PlayStation platforms, but um, Sega has released some fair share of crap games on PlayStation platforms in the past. Well, course, Not really yeah. necessarily on 4, but 3 and then yeah. 2, and even dating back to PS1. So it's like, well, you know, I think actions yeah. speak louder it, than words, so they need to Well, I up. mean... I mean, to be fair, every publisher puts out crap games. Yes, know? that is true. But um, Sega is an exception where it's, yeah, Sega, it's Sega out is kind of like it's like yeah, you're putting out crap games, but like, what was the last good like or great Sega game to come out? You know, true Sega game. Them. Like, I'm not talking like games that published from Sega or like are for Atlas games, for instance, because I think maybe a step in that direction where you may defend uh, Sega is where their acquisition of At Atlas. And you yeah, know, Atlas that's really going to associate with quality. Yeah, because that's really going to help them once like Persona Five comes out and it's going to exactly, be distributed right. through Sega. And it's going to be like, oh, Sega put yeah. out Persona Five. That's awesome. Yeah, and I think really, especially when they acquired them uh, fairly recently, um, was actually kind of a, a big deal for them. Um, so maybe that was kind of a telling sign right there. Yeah. But. Um, you know, I, don't know. I, I was just upset with it because, you know, the patience is really growing with me and Sega that yeah, they need to actually produce something good at this point. Yeah, and, 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 and like you said, the wording, the wording's really weird, especially yeah, from a head guy. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think Sega just needs to kind of, like, dig down deep and kind of, you know, get over exactly. Sonic and realize that you have more franchises than exactly, Sonic right. that you can develop. You know, like, Sega could put out... You know, like Sega, they could put out a Virtua Fighter Six. You know, I mean, there people want fighting games on their new systems. Oh you know, put gosh, out Virtua Fighter Virtua Six. Virtua Fighter Six, something to compete against Virtua Fighter, not uh, Street Fighter Five, and Tekken Seven. Yeah, and maybe right. other Mortal Kombat or whatever Injustice or Two Mortal that Kombat might come out soon or whatever. All, all those other fighting games. Um, yes. You know, I mean, they still put out those Yakuza games a lot, and those definitely have a fan base. Yeah, really um, in Japan though, but that's okay. I mean, they, they still. I mean, they're good games. Like, they're none of yeah. them get like crap reviews. They're, it's a good franchise and it has its following, and that's helping them too. And they are, but I'm saying that's an example of them actually keeping up with the fan base and giving the fans what they want more Yakuza games. But like, they're not putting out. There's no Virtua. There's no uh, Virtua Fighter Six in development that we know of. There's no. You know, everybody's like, oh, make Valkyra Chronicles three or well, actually there was mm. a three, but it never. Actually, no, there is a three. I forgot about that. There is a three, but it was. I think it was only in Japan on PS. Oh boy, never, what a surprise! It, it, yeah, it never got a Western release, mm. and everybody loves the first two, and uh, the third one never got a Western release. And how weird! I mean, the first one was a console game, and then you had the second one that was on PSP, correct? Yes, the second one was on the first one was a PS3 game, the second one was a PSP game, and then like I said, I think there is a third game, but it's only on PSP and it's only in uh, Jap uh, Japan. They yeah. did the Western release. And it's also in, just in Japanese. Just Japanese. So I guess if you're really dedicated, you can import it or whatever. But yeah, this is but really yeah, everybody wants to see. Yeah, everybody wants to see more of that franchise. That's another one that has a hardcore fan base that exactly, wants more, right? and Sega just says nope. But um, uh, so it's just, it's yeah, weird. We'll see where uh, Sega's future lies, and um, as again, maybe the same thing with Konami. Um, as even though Sega is actually not in as deep in the hole as Konami right now, but um, they just better be careful. And um, in Japan, uh, Sega's a little bit more than just games. They also have um, you know, some resort like places in Japan, as I yeah. have seen when I had but, lived there for a couple of years, which is cool. But um. Yeah. But it, it well in Konami's defense, at least Konami has a giant AAA game on their horizon where Sega has like None. nothing, you know. At the moment. I mean, don't get me wrong, Konami's gonna be pretty much done after Metal Gear Solid Five, but you know, at least they're gonna go out with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, 
Metal Gear Solid Five has been uh, gaining more traction uh, since uh, you know with its uh, gameplay videos and all that. So games yeah. uh, vastly approaching, which is awesome. Um, I can't believe it's coming. Very That's what soon. we keep joking. That's what we keep joking. It's not only the finale to a game series, the finale to a whole company, or at least their game company. <laughs> yeah. We joke. I mean, like, I know we keep joking. I mean, Konami kind of keeps saying that, you know, they do plan to keep going after five, at least, you know, developing video games. Because Konami as a company won't shut down. You know, they're still going to put out products and whatnot yeah. in Japan. But if they're not, I, I don't know. I really think after five, they're going to be done as far as making AAA console games. It's pretty much just going to be mobile. A game of that scope, really. I mean, of that scope. They went, they went all in, especially the team at uh, Kojima, they went all in for this one. Really. Yeah, I feel like. I feel like this so, is like, it's it. weird, because, like, when Metal Gear Solid 4 was about to come out, and, you know, he was really saying it was his last one, we sort of believed it, somewhat. Um, but with Metal Gear Solid 5, this one's, uh... No, we know yeah. for sure yeah. this is it. Yeah, due, due to the circumstances this time, um, it's unfortunately looking likely um, yeah. that it is his last one. So, so um, yeah, that's, so that's, if, that's so something if, that we're looking forward to, especially, you know, this is a Metal Gear Solid game that's uh, going all in. All in, yep. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, no holds barred. That's going to be awesome um, when Metal Gear comes out. That's going to be quite a game. <laughs> um, I mean, I won't even be able to have to, like, rush through the main story and just play everything meticulously and, like, go through everything in that. It's going to be such a big game. I'm very excited for it. Um, what else um, do you have maybe listed if you want to switch off? Um... I don't know. You don't have anything? Like, well, I don't know. Like I said, the, the the one big news thing I want to highlight this week was um, the, uh, the, uh, yes. <laughs> the 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 Zero Escape Volume 3. <laughs> the name escaped me for a second. Well, um, um, Zero we Escape. Um, but. Do the, we don't want to repeat ourselves and maybe go down another uh, Telltale rabbit hole. But um, at Minecon we, this week, of yes. last week, well, really oh, yeah, this week. That was something cool this week. Um, um Minecon. Um, mm-hmm. We have the Telltale um, Minecraft series that was formally yes. revealed um, this formally week. Formally revealed. Um, voice cast is quite extensive. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, you got Dave Um yep. uh, Oh my gosh, the, the Patton Oswalt, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a really a great voice actor. Um, and we have uh, basically um, whoever else you could think of in the voice acting world. I, no Troy Baker, <laughs> as we can maybe see it currently. Um, He'll probably be in the game, but um, <laughs> as someone, uh, so um, a lot of the, I don't really see the hate for this one that, as it's getting. I mean, come on! I mean, I really did have my doubts. I'm not gonna lie of Borderlands when that came out, but ever since after now playing the fir- uh, first three episodes of uh, Tales of Borderlands, I really think they can not make anything. I should say. But um, really extend the boundaries of what maybe you think that would be able to work as a, a series, and I'm yeah, and I'm not really a player of Minecraft, but I am interested in this. And what I have seen in the trailer is that yeah, even though it is blocky graphics, it maybe seem like Telltale not really upgrading the engine, but it seems to like the animation seemed smoother in this. Great, yes, the graphics are very blocky in comparison to their other games in the series that they have going on right now, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It, se- it seemed a little different to me. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, plus think about it like this. This yeah. will probably end up being better than any Minecraft movie. That oh Fox yeah, is trying that, to like, develop. you see like on YouTube or like even the Minecraft movie that's supposed to come out, correct? Yeah, the Fox so. is developing a Minecraft movie. Yes, so. probably. You know what, man? I won't be surprised by that because, well, there's, there's already like uh, Walking Dead, for instance, even though I saw a movie, I like the games better than the show. So, um, who? yeah, that, that might be probably true. I mean, the game's going to be like even longer, and but you know, it's kind of, the Telltale games are kind of like watching movies. They're just interactive, you know, um, yeah. especially Game of Thrones. But, um, yeah, I mean, it looks interesting. I really just don't get the hate for it because I think, uh, especially with Borderlands' success right now, I think uh, they can make a really interesting story in uh, of the lore of Minecraft, and um, mm-hmm. I'm actually excited to play it. I think this one will be wildly successful uh, for Telltale, hopefully, because they really haven't boasted sales numbers, which they don't need to, but yeah. I feel like they need... Not hit the same home run as Walking Dead Season 1, but just maybe something that... Uh, Goes out of the park a little bit. Doesn't have mm. to hit the home run. 
but I wonder, goes out of the park, hmm. which is a home run, but nothing that will hit the home run and smash a car window. <laughs> so I'll give it. I'll Fair give up. it that extent. But I just, I, wonder, I, I just wanted something else that's wildly popular from Telltale. I'm sure yeah. uh, Game of Thrones and Borderlands are doing fine numbers wise, but I just don't see anything that gets everybody talking. And you know, especially you had said, you know, I'm really the only person playing some of these episodic games right now. Um, but I think Game of Thrones is doing really well, especially when those episodes yeah. come out, people play them. But Borderlands, yeah. I really don't see anybody like really talking about it or really playing it. And I'm sure people are probably waiting like you. And I want to blame you due to the fact that um, someone had just brought up to me that um, that we are nearly waiting a quarter year for one episode now, which is getting ridiculous. Yeah. So, but I mean, the thing is, the thing is, like, okay, yeah. well, like something like Walking Dead and Game of Thrones, you have that name brand value yes. to it. Yes. You which know, is people, wildly popular. Yeah, both those are like those are the two most popular shows on TV right now. So, like, you know, there's a huge fan base there that are like they either. You know, the fan base fed either they play games and they're like, okay, cool, I can play a Walking Dead game, or cool, I can play a Game of Thrones game. Or if they're just like, okay, I watch TV, but I don't play too many games, they can still play the Telltale games because they're not, you know, they're friendly to people who don't play games, like casual gamers, you know? Yes. You can kind of go and play it. So that's why those are doing really well for Telltale because the name brand value and the fact that it can get to the casual and it can get to kind of the, the hardcore um, the gamers. Yeah. Borderlands, on the other hand, is a little weird because if Borderlands only... is a popular franchise, I mean, it's well, it is a popular. But but here's the thing. Here's the pro- here's the difference. If you're a big fan of Game of Thrones, you're okay with just playing a game because yeah. you're just used to watching. A, you're used to watching you know a story, show, yeah. and you're Game of Thrones and you're is used really all story. Yeah, you're used to watching the show a story, and you and then when you play the game, you're okay with just watching or interacting. You know, mm-hmm. with Borderlands is a bit different. With Borderlands, it's like the fan base is like, okay, I play Borderlands. I like looting and shooting being, and doing all this co-op hunter. stuff, being the vault hunter, doing all this co-op stuff. So the idea of oh, a Telltale series just doesn't well, you're sound just walking around, not shooting, walking things, around mo- the majority of around. the time. Yeah, not walk around, not shooting things just doesn't seem as appealing to the audience. Now, don't get me wrong. I know Tales of Borderlands is good. I'm just saying initially yeah. it doesn't like it's putting it, it off. It doesn't gel that, right with the, the yeah. Borderlands audience because yeah. that game is like ADD because like you could just do really a lot in Borderlands and um, it's just really a really odd contrast to like what yeah. you do in Tales of Borderlands as opposed to um, the actual games. So yeah, that's you know that's, that's what I'm the saying the one. only. That's what I'm saying. The only fan base of Borderlands is people who play the games, obviously. So when they go, when they see Tales of Borderlands, just while playing, just seeing it, go, oh, well, that's not Borderlands, you know? Yeah, it's not really. But majority. I mean, yeah, you have money, you have like a really shallow loot system. You actually have like a loot system in Tales of Borderlands, but it's nothing extensive. Um, you know, it's just yeah. uh, people will find lack of depth there, unfortunately. Which uh, yeah. it's just kind so of a given at this point, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the thing. Um, but, um, yeah, um, yeah. Minecraft uh, Story Mode looks great. Um, excited to play it uh, whenever it gets released. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yes. well, with, with the success of Jurassic World, do you think Telltale would, like, attempt to retry, try Jurassic Park again? <laughs> basically retry. I want to do over. I just want to try again. Yeah, because the Jurassic Park Telltale game was really lame. Uh... And you would think they would make a really good one. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But it was after Walking Dead, they got their act together. Yeah. Um, just about everything they put out has been great. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably, maybe. But um, as I've said, uh, they actually do need to solve their role with some things right now, and especially with the fact that we nearly wait a quarter year for some episodes in between episodes is getting a bit ridiculous. And um, yeah. as of right now... Um, I believe, not Tales of the Borderlands, but actually still the, not pocket it, I hate to call it pocket edition, but just basically the mobile versions of Game of Thrones are still broken. So, which is probably a low percentage of that audience, but it's still, you know, people that are consuming it, and it gets on the front page of the App Store and creates problems. So, yep. they need to slow the roll a bit. So, I would like that, but that's probably in the <laughs> down roll, unfortunately. And You know, there's going to be other movies that will probably fill in that gap, but I would like to see another game um, attempt at that again. It it seems like something that could actually be really cool. Mm-hmm. I want another. I want a good Jurassic Park game. Even though we have Lego Jurassic World that came out last month, um, I want a legit 
Uh, not saying it's not legit, but I. Yeah. <laughs> but I want a true. If I have this, a true Jurassic Park game. What about what about if they made a new Jurassic Park simulator game where you like make your own park and you like building shops and all that? Um, if they get it a way to it'll work on consoles just fine, then yeah, I'll be I'll be sold. Yeah, that'd be fun. I played the PS2 yeah. one. That yeah. was awesome. I mean, if it works just like that, where it's intuitive on a controller, yes. I mean, it really sounds like something. Maybe a developer from like the um, people who made Cities that would probably make it, but um, mm-hmm. that would really be on PC. Which I, I is unfortunate, but um, well, I don't um, know. Oh, what was that one game called? It wasn't a simulator, but it was like a RTS. Um, was it Ruse? Was yeah, it like a Ubisoft game or something. Yeah, Just, I don't know. I don't know what happened to that developer. I don't know if they're still doing what some because that's what everybody. I never played it, but like everyone who did play it said, like it was perfect. Like as far as controls, you know, like putting an RTS on consoles. And if I recall, Tom Clancy's End War was pretty acclaimed for that, wasn't it? Or I don't know if people mm, like that. I don't, I don't know. I don't think I think in war. I don't think the praise was too high on it. But I don't know control. I mean, the game itself might not have been good, but the controls might have been good. I don't know. Maybe I'm not. I'm you not really I mean? That game came out a while ago. Yeah, but I Ruse. Just, I remember when Ruse came out. That was a game where like everybody was saying it was good, and they praised the controls. Like it was perfectly capturing the RTS experience on a console. So if those guys can like you know move on and work on more like RTS or maybe like park management type thing for consoles to kind of get the controls to work right. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Cause like, cause like, Ruse was such a weird game. Cause like, remember when they first announced it? Like the first trailer of it was really weird. There was some kids playing with like a virtual table thing, you know, <laughs> swiping their hands and stuff. And I'm like, like you think it's a game, virtual reality game? Yeah, like, and uh, like the Hollow game was nothing. The game was nothing like that. The game utilized no fancy technology. All you could use was the controller. And yes, it supported the move, so you can use the move controls to do something like that, like pinch and pull with the controllers, I guess. And so I guess you can kind of do it with the move control, but it, it still, it was just weird. It was a trailer that showed something that ultimately wasn't the game, you know? Yeah. Uh, that was, that was it, really it was weird. a fantasy trailer. Yeah, but you know, that's Ubisoft, putting out trailers two years before a game comes out, and by the time it comes out, it's something completely different. Ah, good job you talked about Ubisoft, because our next thing that we're going to talk about before we actually go into the main thing this week um, is Ubisoft's policy changes. Um Ooh. That they had stated after the release of Watch Dogs. Um, okay. They had stated, um, especially with the after the release of Watch Dogs and the graphical down- downgrades that came with it, was just basically, mm-hmm. in summary, just something that, you know, um, it's its first iteration, um, was maybe a bit too much for them. So, in the future, they are going to look into really not revealing games like that in that nature of how they did it with Watch Dogs. And um, in the future, they probably will look yeah. into probably like lo- actually having the game playable, like when revealing it. So, yeah. I, I don't really. So, does that really mean it's going to be. Because it really surprised me. Probably it didn't surprise you as much that I was surprised that we didn't get like a Watch Dogs 2 announcement this year. Now, maybe that's a step in the right direction for them to actually really take their time with it and really maybe not announce it too early. True. But I don't know. I was actually kind of surprised that there was actually no Watch Dogs 2 announcement this year. Um, I, yeah. Possibly we might get it this year, but it's now seeming unlikely. So Yeah. I think... Yeah. Like I said, I think we kind of talked about this before, maybe on a podcast, maybe outside the podcast, but Ubisoft always has this tendency that they've been doing the past couple of years of, like, showing, like I said, showing off games that are, like, yes. years, years off. Out. And they're, like I said, they're just so far out that there's no way the final product can be the same, because if it was the same, that means you've done no progress, right? <laughs> um, you know, like, you haven't been working on it, there's no progress, and... <sighs> Watch Dogs, the reason Watch Dogs gets so much crap is because Watch Dogs is a weird game in the fact that... It is that a weird game. I mean, came, I, play, I, have, I have never beat it, and i never even gotten past the second act, but I was never really engaged to really fully play it. I mean, it's not a bad game. It's not. Oh, no. It's far no, from a bad game, actually. It's, it's just... It's it's good. It's, it's just... It's strange. It's, 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 I mean, it's, I like it. Don't get me it's wrong. Strange. I'm not a Watch Dogs hater, but... It, no, it's, it's the strange. thing about Watch Dogs is the thing about Watch Dogs is it was just one of those games where, like, like you said, it was a three-year hype train, basically. Yeah, know. You know, they announced it. They it came should, out like, of nowhere. When that, the first initial reveal was like, "Whoa, this is gonna be like." Yeah, they didn't like, even say the system, right? 
Yeah, they didn't say the system. They just said, here's Watch Dogs. And it, and it showed, and, like, on the high-end PCs. Yeah, they showed it on a high-end PC, and it was, like, a, you know, a vertical slice demo thing where it was just this one little level they made on a PC. And Watch Dogs blew everyone's mind. And it was three years later the game <sighs> finally came out. And that was the, like, Watch Dogs was the weirdest thing because, like, when it was first announced, it was super hype. Like, people were talking about it. Like, it was winning game of the show and all that stuff. It was blowing people's minds. Then they then they kind of showed a little bit more of it over the course of a year. Then at the two year mark, they showed it again, announcing that's a PS4 game, showing all this cool stuff like here's Watch Dogs running on PS4, next gen, awesome, and like again it was riding that hype train, and that that delay killed the game. That last delay. Yes, I know, game. right? When when it was um, I, I would like almost call it the Ark of Night delay, where it was like the half year one, right? Yeah, like yeah, that, that game was supposed that to come out. Killed it for me. If if it were, were to come out at that time, it was supposed to. I probably would have played it more. Not that that's really like a factor or for anything of the game. I would have probably yeah. played it more. Because the fact it that so... it came out in May was just weird. I didn't like it. Yeah, but that was the thing with Watch Dogs. The hype was so high for that game, going mm-hmm. into its original release date of November yes, it... uh, yeah, 2013, it November. when it was supposed to launch. Yes. Yeah, I was supposed to launch with the PS4, and there was so much hype for that game going into it. And when they did that delay to May, it killed it. Like there was no hype for that game anymore. Like no one cared. Yeah, anymore because as after like that. we started seeing more and more of it, and then when people started seeing like the graphics downgrades and like things about gameplay that probably didn't make much sense for people, um, that's what really killed it. You know. Yeah, and I mean, I say it killed it, but I mean the game still sold really well when it finally launched. <laughs> yeah, because in May. yeah, exactly. Like, it sold well, but no one cared. Like, no one was talking about it. People were just playing it, but no one was talking about it. No, no one was like, oh, really after. no substance. No one was going on about how amazing Watch Dogs is. No one was going on, like, talking about it with their friends. Like, hey, you playing Watch Dogs? Yeah, me too. And, like, it's it was not nothing. Like, 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 no one talks about Watch Dogs anymore. Yeah, it and came, came and out went. this year <laughs> or, or last know. year. And it was just like, it's just whatever. It's, we- it's just exactly. Watch Dogs, that weird game. It had all this hype. And just went away. And that's yeah. just what happens when you have these long preview cycles for, you know, like I said, three-year cycle with exactly. Watch Dogs. It's too and, long. Mm-hmm. And I know we mention this sometimes about uh, percentage with achievements, and it's probably not the biggest deal in the world. But take a look at the achievement percentage of people who actually had beaten the game. It's like tw- less than 20%, yeah. which is the bad, games, which is bad, which is well, pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah, but the game's freaking long, it is man. Long. Like, uh, the, like Act not, Two I mean, is I, you so know, I, I, freaking I long. I GTA and other open world games where they're long, but um, where there's actually like good substance in there. But it watched uh, yeah, it the, didn't seem like it, it engaged people. GTA Four yeah. also has a really bad percentage rate, but probably people play that online. Same with Watch Dogs, yeah. you know. But yeah, it has a really low percentage for people who have actually really, really engaged in the game. Not saying yeah. that you have to beat it, but like for other things. You know? Well, yeah, but I mean, like, the pacing's really off in the game, because, yes. like, it's divided into five acts, and it goes something like something like this. I don't know the exact numbers, but it goes something like this. Like, act one's about five missions, and you're like, okay, act two is, like, 30 missions, act three is only, like, ten, act four is about, like, eight, and then act five is one mission. Yeah. So, <sighs> act two is, like, longer than all the other acts put together. <laughs> so it's it's just so bad when you like you finish act one you're like all right i finished act one all right i'm making progress you get to act two and you sit there you do five missions you're like oh huh, i'm still in act two you do about five more i'm still in act two you do ten more i'm still in act two and it yeah. just kills your pacing because you expect the rest of the acts to be as long as act two because that's what you're thinking yeah. in your head as you're playing but really three on up is really short or at least especially compared to act two act two is just so damn long that it, it kills the pacing of the game. Yeah, and, and like, you know, it's just some little things that add up in the game that I didn't really like. Like, I didn't really... I, I wasn't a fan of some of the gunplay in the game. I mean, I like the cover system, but I know it could definitely be improved in the next one. You know, especially with the yeah. iterative things, especially in the third-person gameplay that it has. Um, I absolutely hated the soundtrack in the game. It was absolutely awful. Um, the in-game <laughs> car radio stations were awful. Mm-hmm. I don't know who curated that music, and... Ubisoft, I, I'm actually kind of serious about this. Ubisoft should actually get like a side budget for that game to actually license decent music in the game because it does cost money, yes. But I think Ubisoft can actually maybe buckle down at least, maybe set aside at least maybe fifty grand to like actually get <laughs> licensed music because 
Nope. Yeah, it'll cost them maybe like a grand a pop to actually get like one decent song, but I'm actually kind of serious about that. They need to, um, because if you're going to be driving a lot around that game, then I'll just fire up Spotify on the PlayStation app and put songs in there myself at yeah. that point. Um, so stuff like that, just really <laughs> they, nibble they at me. Gotta... I mean, I might go back to just Watch get, Dogs. Just get, but... just get the guys who did uh, yeah. the, the Ghost Recon Wildlands. They're going to yeah, do exactly. the soundtrack. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Ghost Recon Wildlands were the people, awesome people at Rockstar and uh, um, uh, oh my, the developers of uh, Saints Row to do or something. Fire it up a little bit. I mean, at least something decent. Um, yeah. So that that's not even asking much. I mean, they have the ability to license music, especially since they develop Rocksmith. So not saying really Rocksmith really has the best, but um, something good. So um, yeah, and I know. mean, yeah, but like, well, going back around to the to the kind of the main topic here. Yeah, yeah, the, like, how because, Ubisoft the, will be yeah, in the future. Of all. Yeah. Yeah, but like I like uh, like I'm trying to get at because Watch Dogs went through this huge thing, the three year preview cycle, and mm-hmm. you know how the how it how it went on so long that it that the hype ended up dying right before launch. Um, I think Ubisoft knows that now, and they are like I said, lowering the preview cycle for their games. Like look at like Rainbow Six Siege. We've only known about that game for like what a year now, and it comes yeah. out in October, so it hasn't been that long. Like they announced I feel like it, the last one that and, they did was really and, the cutting it off at E3 with Ghost Recon Wildlands. We're not going to see that game for a while. So really, that seems like that was the last one that they did of like revealing too early. Yeah, I but feel like. you, I mean, we at least saw gameplay within that trailer. You know, that is a good point, point, but I, I, I was almost kind of with you. Yeah, was, I'm kind of with you that we're not going to see that game next year, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think so either. Like, it, like I like, said, yeah, that, they'll say it comes out this year, but it's going to be the one where it gets delayed to next to the but, next year. But that suck. one, but that's but Wildlands is different because it has a Ghost oh, Recon yeah. name behind it. Yeah, you know, so it yeah, gives a little bit more. It's thing, already like, established Dogs, franchise. Yes. Yeah, where Watch Dogs is a new IP, so it's kind of more like why. Well, I, I don't uh, know. Movies. With the, with Ghost Recon, it's kind of like not a return to form, but a return to a new form for Ghost Recon. Yeah, because Ghost Recon was kind of in that pit for a while, and where you know they had the past couple of games where they were pretty mediocre, in my in my opinion. Now mm-hmm. this is kind of like a new kind of Ghost Recon. It's something different, and they claim it's the largest world Ubisoft has ever created. I, t- I saw it on Wikipedia, and then I checked the article that was embedded in it, and yes, they did claim it's larger than any world they have ever created. So it's going to take time. Yeah. So that's where I kind of, I'm edging to where it's going to come out in 2017, unfortunately. Um, that's just yeah. kind of the reality where I see. Um, yeah, sure, maybe they'll yeah. say it comes out in 2016. Who knows? Yeah, they might get delayed. Yeah, yeah but like I said, Ghost Recon's a little different. Because of the fact that, mm. you know, like, it has a name brand behind, it, so it kind of lets people gives gives it, it makes the fans more likely to wait. They're more willing to wait for it, you know, yeah. because it has a name brand behind. Where Watch Dogs is new IP, so everyone wants to know about it, and they read about it, and they see it all about it for three years, and the pre cycle's too long, and then it falls short of expectations. Yeah. But now, we, like I said, you got something like. We're able to succeed. We've only known about it for about a year, and it's coming out this year, so it's a shorter preview cycle. Um, For Honor, that's a new IP we saw at E3 this year. Now I don't know when that's coming out, but I'm pretty sure they're shooting for 2016. So either way, it'd be about a year. Yeah, I don't think the wait for that one will be too bad. I think uh, For Honor has probably been in development for a while. Yeah, so I'll probably be ready for 2016 For Honor. Um, And then, and then, but then the division we've known about the division for what going on three years now. Yeah, but. But again, that was before. That was like I said when they were still doing the Watch Dogs thing, where they're you know hyping yes. up a game that's still years off. Um, mm-hmm. So the division's different. The division's kind of like that last one where like yeah, it ha- it's getting a long preview cycle before release. Exactly. And then I guess maybe Ghost Recon. But like I said, they are. I think they are kind of pulling back because they know it will kind of hurt the game. You know, more than anything. Um, it's just really in summary at this point like ea ubisoft or anyone else that wants to reveal games really early yeah sure you might hurt the fans a little bit by keeping quiet for a while but just follow the bethesda playbook that's the played or the rock band 4 played or the yeah um, rock band 4 ones also i mean they didn't announce rock band 4 for a while and then oh look it came and it's coming out this year you know same yeah so um yeah just follow those playbooks and you'll be fine um even even square's doing it sort of 
Uh, Square hmm. Square is on the two extremes. They either do the super extreme where they go like Final Fantasy VII Remake coming out whenever, you know, or Kingdom Hearts 3, and then they do the opposite where it's like, oh, look, Just Cause 3 coming out this year, or oh, look, Hitman coming out this year. So, like, Square Enix is another weird company because they do both extremes. They either announce a game way too early or they announce it kind of almost too late where it's like, oh, that's coming out this year? I didn't know. You know, the only like real Hitman company that can really get calls. away with at least a wait of maybe two or more years is Rockstar when they announce their games where like, you know, they yeah. have like that trailer that like launches on YouTube just some random day and it's mm-hmm. there and it gets millions of views and really uh, talk about it and then uh, it doesn't come out for maybe just at least two years. Like I think the wait between uh, GTA 5's initial trailer and the release of the game was about two years. Um, yeah. Yeah, even, that's including even the delay when it was supposed to actually come out in the spring of 2013. So, um, I, I believe also Red Dead was announced a while back and didn't come up for a while. Um, yeah. So, so Rockstar learned their lesson on that one. Uh, but yeah, Rock- not really. I mean, Red Dead lived up to its fullest potential and more so. Uh, Red Dead's a fantastic game. So this is that saying that it was in the Watch Dogs situation. But, you know, things were different back then. Nowadays, yeah. um, we're, we're kind of seeing a bad change. and. What Ubisoft has said this week, hopefully, is a good change and will, you know, um, let the games prosper and just have it it be better. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see that very soon. And um, I hate to go back to Ghost Recon, but I I really can't wait for that game. (laughs) That game's going to be badass for many reasons, including the soundtrack. Can't wait to fight the friction. Can't fight the friction. (laughs) Good song. Anyway, um, <laughs> we kind of wanted to go at the topic of hand, a uh, main topic at hand this week of how main topic June has passed by. Yes, half of the year is already done. Yeah, I know, um, right? We have some viewer mail that we could go over that um, uh-huh. kind of relates to ha- how um, half of the year is done, and some other things that we'll get into in the end that I won't fall into a rabbit hole in, and probably we'll save it for next week. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, we'll go into one right now. Yes. Which comes from, uh, all right. Oh, we already kind of went over, uh, Caleb's question about, uh, Telltale, which, you know, we talked about earlier with the Gas mm-hmm. Routine episode. So, Caleb, we already kind of answered your question about that. He was we just asking about Minecraft Story Mode and how, um, how the half year gaps. He's at the quarter year gaps between it. Yep. So, he's the one actually running that. So, we already cool. checked that one off. Cool. We got you um, covered, man. Yes. Uh, we will answer a question actually from our YouTube uh, inbox, which actually comes from user Falcon264. Falcon is awesome. Falcon Punch. Um, with the year already half done, what has been some of the biggest surprises to come from 2015 so far? I guess maybe, you know, new stories, games that maybe surprised you, or anything on the PlayStation front that has really maybe have been surprising from E3? Yeah. I, I'm almost, I already kind of have that one ready. What, what do you got? Yeah, well, I What's mean... What's been surprising? I mean, it's easy to call out E3, but the, E3 we always get, we, that's kind of like, like, mm-hmm. you expect the surprises at E3, and we've already kind of talked about it a bit, of like, what, what we think about E3. Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to think of something outside of E3 that kind of got my attention. I, don't know. Uh, I mean, that, 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 this, not, I, I think I'm surprised at really how good that press conference was, though. Because yeah. I expected it to be good, because, you know, coming, com, coming off of 2014, which was good, but nothing great. But actually, this year was, like, fantastic. Yes. Like, PlayStation um, Experience level, fantastic. Yes. Because I love PlayStation Experience. Yes. But I mean, no, we kind of already went over how we feel at E3, so I'm just trying to think of something outside of E3. So for me, like outside of E3, uh, I know, it kind of got you out of the spot on that one. But what, yeah, well, what's been I, got it. I got one. I got one. Uh, this one was kind of a, a surprise, but not a surprise, but it was still got me excited. Uh, it's with a Rock surprise. Band, what was Rock Band 4 getting announced? Well, yeah. You know, because Rock Band 4 was a game we talked about so much when we first started this podcast. We were talking about, because like, remember that when we first started this podcast, we were talking about how we hope it gets announced. We hope it gets announced. We hope it comes out this year. And you so were doubting. Yes. And you were doubting that this game was yeah, even we in even development. Yeah, this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was doubting it was in development for, yeah, because due to the surveys, I was like, are they even starting? Yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah you were doubting. I have my doubts about that. But yeah, you're, when we you're looked da- at the video in the initial um, announcement of the game, um, really they went into how the surveys are just kind of shaping up the game's future. Yes. Um, so the game, the base game of it, has already been 
in development for quite some time. So that's where I was incorrect. Um, that's where the surveys kind of were at. So my mind was kind of in the wrong place where the surveys um, were in part for the game's development. So that that initial video proved me wrong 110%. Yeah, and I mean that's the thing too. That's the thing too about mm. well, well, for the half year thing, mm. we here the PSBS. I mean, we've been doing this since January, so that means not only has it been a half a year, twenty fifteen, but it's been half a year of the PSBS. Yes, you know. So, if like, anything surprising that you can maybe think of other than Rockman Four, if there's anything um, I, that even I'm trying to think of, uh, that is a tough one. If you have any, you can just shout some out. I mean, I really want to say the first 10 minutes of Sony Z3, but I mean, you know, that is kind of a given. But I mean, it, it was really awesome. You know, it was kind of that that dream fan fiction uh, conference there. Um, I think that was really surprising, yeah. especially on I the mean, heels of, you know, Microsoft was really great as well. Yeah. But like um, I said, Rockman 4 game announced was awesome to me because we were hoping yeah. for it for so much and it's coming this year. Um, you know, we got to see Last Guardian came back to life this year. <laughs> that was yeah. a big thing. And that was one that I predicted that was not going to show up, but it was there. Yeah. So that's a surprise. It was there. Uh, yeah, I'll say that kind of as a big surprise, actually, also, even though, you know, um, maybe to some people it wasn't, but. Um, you know, you just predict that every year that Last Guardian is going to be there, but actually this time, you know, I had my, um, I had my um, hi, uh, hopes low, but um, the fact that it was there, I was surprised. Yeah. So um, I could also put that out there. Um, yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, Dying Light was a big surprise to you. How much you love that game? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And we'll go over to also our favorite games this year, and uh, probably Dying Light might be up there. We'll see. Uh, I mean, as great as Arkham Knight is, we'll talk about that soon. But. Uh, yeah, D- Dying Light. Yes, Dying Light is more than a surprise. Okay, probably Dying Light is the biggest surprise. You know, how, how well it sold. It mm-hmm. gained. It actually had gained traction after release. It's having its DLC. Um, and it's just a fantastic game. I love freaking Dying Light. And it's actually really a, a stepping stone for Techland in terms of quality. Yes, there were some technical issues with Dying Light, and there was a period of time where I didn't play the game due to the fact that the trophies were broken. Sounds like a silly excuse, but the trophies were broken. But um, I think it's a stepping stone for Techland in, t- in terms of them upping the quality of their games. And it really shows in the fact that they put... Um, it, they halted development of the other game that they were making. Um, wh- I forgot the name in case. Maybe um, you know. Um, um, I forget what it was called. Yeah, me too. So we're going to forget about it. Uh, unfortunately, just like but, them, uh, just like Techland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no. I just made me think that maybe they're rethinking of how that game will actually be, yeah. and hopefully that one that one's going to actually maybe turn out to be a quality product due to the fact that Dying Light was so freaking good that they know that maybe now they need to live up to that quality standard now. It's kind of like kind of yes. like um, CD Projekt Red, mm-hmm. their ga- their follow up to Witcher Three that, that said they <sighs> that they they said they're not even going to talk about the game until like 2017 or something like that. Yeah, I know, huh? Like, yeah, that game's way off. That, that's said. another example, but we, we don't really need to say that. That's already well stated enough, dude. The fact yeah. that that trailer was, what, 2012? <laughs> mm, not good on CG products for its part. Um, but um, that was just them. But, um, yeah, that, I think, I'd think i say Dying Light. Good, good uh, one there. I mean, even though Dying Light is my mind, but that game is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Dying Light was one of my most surprise of the year. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is definitely my biggest surprise. Um, now, what is something... We'll go into the highest first. What has been our favorite games on the PlayStation platforms this year? It could be Vita, PS4, possibly PS3, if there's been any good ones. Yeah. Well, for me, it's definitely on the PS4 front. My two games of the year right now are Batman and The Witcher 3. Yeah. Um, like I said, I haven't finished Batman yet, so I don't want to you know, crown it my game of the year so far just yet. Yeah, you know, I do want to finish it. But Witcher, you it. gave your whole spiel, you know. Yeah, and the Witcher, I gave my whole spiel already. I've already done an episode talking about the praise of Witcher three, even though I haven't finished that one yet either. Yeah, you know, because it's a really long game too. Um, but it's definitely between those two games right now, as far as my uh, favorite game of the year so yeah. far. Mm. But, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, we already talked about. I've already talked about why I love the Witcher and why I love Batman so far. Uh, exactly. In the past things, so I don't want to go too deep into that. Yeah, we have, those are already pretty well stated, those two games. Um, me personally, um, I've already had... I was pretty vocal already about Dying Light in uh, some previous episodes, maybe five or ten ago, um, that Dying Light is a fantastic game. 
It's probably in terms... Ugh. It's, it, that one's tough. I mean, I love... Hello? Hi. Okay, never mind. Anyway. Right. <laughs> this uh, paranoid here, similar to how I was in Dying Light, because I was freaking paranoid in that game. That game was scary at points. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just love the co-op play in Dying Light. I think it's a lot of fun, especially playing that game with friends. Um, it's you know it's, it, with games like that, and even with Borderlands, it's kind of a grind in the beginning, you know. But then when you mm-hmm. you know you get at it, it gets a hell of a lot of fun as you the more you play it. Um, it isn't a terrible grind. You don't have to play it like for twenty hours, but you know it's just kind of that initial grind. You know your bar- weapons barely do anything to zombies, like, you know. So, um, I just really love gameplay and dying. Like the traversal is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I might have spoken. In the beginning, before that game was released, that I was concerned about the map size, but I think the map size is just right, especially if the, how you traverse the map. Um, so I was kind of wrong on that. And the beat the zombie mode is really cool too. I actually play it, even though there's no trophies associated with it. That's actually a lot of fun. You feel like you're freaking Venom, um, mm-hmm. like it's why, like stringing around buildings and all that stuff. You're, you're like Venom. Mm-hmm. And um, so, in case anybody really wanted to play as Venom, um, Ultimate Spider-Man here. Um, the game's awesome. That's an underappreciated Shout game. Shout out to Treyarch. Uh, but we gotta talk about games that haven't came out ten years, more than ten plus years ago. But um, I want my yeah, Ultimate Spider-Man remaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, right. Um, other shout outs I want to give to is uh, Life is Strange. I think that game has really been fantastic. We actually have a question about that game again, not really to the game itself, but something about it. Um, that we'll get into towards the end. Um, something I can pocket for next week, but I'll get into yes. what it is. Um, um, hopefully an episode four announcement soon for that game. Um, oh, another game. Uh, I thought of another one. Another what, good surprise game. Yeah, you can um, interrupt me. What is it? What yeah. you got? Uh, Wolfenstein The Old Blood. Uh, no, yeah. yeah really good. Well, I really had, had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, I, I, I really like it. I don't like it as much as The New Order. I mean, not yeah. that it really had to be, due to the fact, you know, no. that's a full game, and this is just, you know... Um, but that actually, was what thing. originally was supposed to be was, like, it was supposed to be DLC for the New Order, split into three, but they just combined it all into one. Um, but I think as a DLC yeah. package, it's fantastic, you know? Yeah. It, it really uh, feels like a full-fledged game. Yeah, because I didn't play... Yeah, because I didn't play the New Order. I just played... Well, I mean, now I've played it, but, like, the first one I played was the Old Blood. I played the Old Blood first, before New Order. Yeah. So that was like my first intro to the world of the Wolfenstein or this new one. Yeah. But uh yeah, how like the, the cutscenes uh, were and how it's like how it's story based and mm-hmm. just the campaign. Stealth mechanics, some cool stuff. And yeah, like I said, it's a twenty dollar standalone thing, but you get a lot of content out of it. It took me like seven hours to beat the story. Yeah, I know. You know? It took me seven hours for like in really time, like it took me like a whole week to beat that game. Like I played it like every day for like a week and it was still getting at me. You know, I did like the challenges. I platinumed it. And it was mm-hmm. it was a bitch to platinum, but it it, <laughs> it, it, it was good. Um, yeah, that that, that also uh, Bravo the Machine games there. Yeah. Um, Tales of Borderlands is also fantastic. Um, what, Shovel Knight's also great, but that came out last year. Technically, I mean, it came out this year on PlayStation platforms, but that was that was that game was last year. Mm-hmm. Um, Rocket League is fantastic. I played I played some Rocket League um, a couple days ago um, when it was free. Places Plus that game is really great so far. Um, definitely up there and downloadable games for uh, PlayStation Four. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, Batman Arkham Knight. Been playing that a lot. Yes. Um, that game is also fantastic. Um, yeah, a lot of highs uh, this year. But let's also get into uh, someone's question. I believe. Um. No, I don't think that's actually a question. Okay. That, that, this is going to be one that's personally for me. What is, something that I kind of like a little bit. The disappointments of the year. What has something that has kind of, not really, really made you angry, but kind of made you um, startled? Or like kind of just, I don't know, kind of say WTF. <laughs> what, have, what has been those moments? It could be a news story. It could be a game. What is something that has maybe startled you? Or baffled you? Uh, hmm. What what would piss me off this year? Yeah, what has something that has been like... I mean, yeah, there's been stuff on movie front, but something on the gaming front. That gaming has front. Kinda... Well, for me, it was kind of 
not not the game itself, mm. but just kind of the overall reception other people have given it. Mm. Um, of what? Of of like Evolve. Like mm. Evolve's a game that I really liked, but I just don't like the kind of general reaction yes, it is people very have been general. giving it. I'll have to admit that it is very general, but there are I I see the intentions somewhat yeah because i was I, playing because yeah. i actually played evolve this week i played it mm. uh i was trying out because they you know a lot they've been the putting DLC, a lot of updates. Right? yes new dlc the second new, uh, season pass second season pass <laughs> um yes but but it has to be noted two yeah. season passes from evolve still equals one season pass yeah. of call I mean, of duty even price <laughs> you know it's just yeah. it's just what it is i just don't want i just don't want people to freak out like oh two season passes but i mean Two season pass is still the price of one season pass of Call of Duty. So now, what would it be if there was a third season pass? Well, if you got a third season pass, then now you're going That's above Call of Duty. You know, in 2K at this point. I don't know. It's just, but I mean, you got to look at what it gives you. I mean, it gives you new character classes, and I think, I think, I think this will be it. I think it'll just be two two passes because hmm. you know, yeah. Y- because you don't want to overbalance it, you know, or unbalance it by putting in too many characters, you know, in a game right. like this. So I think that'd be good if, like, okay, after this season pass is done, then that'd be three characters per class. So that's pretty good, you know. Um, or no, not three. It'd be um, there's three in the base game, then two. So there's five, five characters per class. So that's yeah. uh, that's a pretty good number, you know, without it being overbalanced. But I mean, I love evolve. And I was playing it the other day. Like you, I said, you trying out. You love Evolve. I love Evolve. It's so not fun. Just like Evolve, you love it. That's love like the I first time I've heard. <laughs> well, I love, love it when I'm. Well, I love it when I'm playing with my friends, and that's the only okay. time I play it. That's the only oh, time yeah, I play it is when I play with my friends. Okay. And you know, it's a great experience yeah. when you play with your friends. You know, like just hunting the of monster course. and doing all that cool with stuff. Any kind of game, it doesn't even matter how bad it is, really. So you're, you're, with your friends. But I mean, Evolve's a great, I think Evolve's a great game, and I like okay. what it does. And, I, I do uh, agree that it, it's, it's, it's. I think it's overgeneralized. I, I understand where maybe yeah. people come from, especially. Uh, I think t- um, the way the PR for 2K and even uh, Turtle Rock itself is atrocious. But I think it's a little too over <laughs> um, overgeneralized a little bit. I don't think really people are giving it a shot, and it's showing in its PC community due to the fact yeah. that nobody is playing the game on PC. Not that that's yeah. an indication. Nobody is streaming the game. Um, it's not really, the, as we had talked about with Watchdog, it's not getting the traction. Um, on consoles, yeah. it is. I think more, pe- way more people are playing on consoles. Like, I, I can bet mm-hmm. you that there are, especially the combined total on PS4 and Xbox One, way more people are playing it on there as opposed to PC, which is interesting. Yeah. But, yeah, that, that, um, like I said, you know, 2K announced it's going to be a stable franchise. We're going to see how in the sequel it improves things. And, I think due to this negative reception of a crap ton of DLC and the way they've been uh, promoting it, I think they'll probably change that now. Hopefully, I hope. And yeah. uh, to not really get that to get that stigma out of that franchise, I, because if they mm-hmm. continue to do it, then it's not going to help. Yeah, because um, I mean, like I said, I, I, I really liked Evolve, and the only mm-hmm. problem I had with it, as far as what they did wrong, I think was kind of the. Not the character DLC. I think the character DLC was fine. You know, twenty five dollars gets you five new characters, and then there's a second pack to get you all of these new characters. So you don't have to put fifty down at once to get everything. You can do it in two separate things. If you don't want to put it all at once, I think that's fine. I think what went wrong was the skin packs and the weapon skin packs, and that was just ridiculous. Like that was a bit over the top. But yeah, it was the really. core. It's but crazy. the core DLC. Yes, the core mat- DLC the was something that, that matters actually added well. to the game. Right. It adds the game, and it was fairly priced. Yeah, it adds the game, and it was fairly yes. priced. The characters and all that. Um, because as far as I had seen, I had done some research, and the characters do seem like something that's uh, vastly different than what you get on the disc. Um, yes. Of course, people are, can argue Live Long Day that it should have been, but actually, in reality of how the game was actually developed, it wasn't. So you can't mm-hmm. really speak to that um, anymore, plus, unfortunately. Plus, Plus, you got to look at all the good things of all mm. uh, 2K has done with Evolve or like, Turtle Rock has done with Evolve. I mean, you look mm. at like, oh, all the map packs are free, like through updates. Like they update the maps into it for free to, for everybody. Everybody gets the new maps for free. Um, okay. They recently put they put in a whole new game mode in there, arena mode, where mm. it kind of makes the games faster because it makes the maps a bit smaller and more confined. So it does kind of speed up the matches a bit for people who want shorter matches um, and kind of more intense gunplay. Because yeah. you know that's that's kind of the big problem. A lot of people don't get what evolves that you need to play cooperatively, not yeah. just run around shooting things. 
So it kind of mm-hmm. intensifies things a bit doing the arena mode. Then they add in spectator mode, so you can add a six person into the game to just kind of watch and spectate. Um, yeah. So that's cool. And then, like, with the arena mode, like I said, the arena mode was a free update, gave it to everybody. Plus, they gave trophies. There's new trophies now for arena mode. Oh. You know? And it wasn't just one or two. Like, they added, like, at least, I think, like, six trophies just for arena mode. That was free. Yeah. So, I mean, they've done a lot of good with Evolve, too. I mean, yeah, they've done some some questionable things with some of the skin the DLC. I'll admit. Uh, yeah, and the PR, but they've done good, too. Like I said, free map packs, free, you know, new game modes and stuff. Okay. And, it, and like I said, Evolve is a good game. You just need to play cooperatively with other people. You know, like friends and communicate and stuff like that. It is a very kind of niche in that sense that you need the kind of like cooperative sense to kind of get the full experience of that. People don't have friends these days. People, nope, they don't. It's too and, sad. Uh, <laughs> yep. So, yeah, I think, like I said, that's kind of one thing that disappointed me, which is kind of the bad rap that Evolve got, you know, after okay. launch. That, that wasn't it deserved. Um. Okay, so that that's kind of one that is ba- that's the most baffling one that you can think of, really, off the top. Well, of that's your just head. what popped the on the top of my head. The because... of evolve, you think? Really? Well, I mean, that's what popped in my head because I turned my head and I saw my evolve box on the side of me because I was playing <laughs> it the other day, and uh, kind of clicked like, yeah, evolve, yeah, that game's awesome, and people were bad mouthing it for no reason. Okay. You know, so well, I don't know. That's what popped in my head. I'm not going to waste too much of my breath on the ones that I'm going to say here because already two come to mind. Two games, essentially, come to mind. I know uh, what one of them year. is. Yes, you already know. You're going to know two of them right now. Um, that I'm not. These I can easily go on for half an episode, but due to the fact that we're already going on time, which we probably are a little bit this week, but not too much for you guys. But um, I will only talk about these probably only for two minutes. One? <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. It's not even funny. Well, that I should not label as disappointing at this point because it's something I, I'll just say the order 1886. Um, just what the hell about that game? <laughs> it, <laughs> let me. It just, came and went, and it's gone. It came and here's the thing: because I can't say it's the most disappointing game of the year. Because guess what? It came and went. I have already forgotten the plot of the game. I, I'm sorry, like, I do forget things quite easily, but I have already forgot what has even happened in that game. And when something along those lines happens like that, that's a bad sign. And I'm almost starting to willing to think of my second game that I'm going to talk about right now, just for the sake of not even beating around the bush here, Battlefield Hardline. That game was also a game that also will come, probably uh, came and went. That game has already came and went. I had just played it recently, so I was kind of late to the train on that one. But, due to the fact that also I was having a hard time finding games online for it. So, um, it just kind of led me to believe, you know, even after the Order 1886's release, and we had stuff that we had talked about um, on previous episodes of what um, how Ready at Dawn is restructuring, mm-hmm. um, which, we, which we hope works in the long term. Um, and the game is just meeting its sales expectations, and we had speculated, you know, um, due to the fact that its engine is already established, that somebody else can take the reins and actually improve its gameplay, um, which would be great. Um, so that's the order. You know, we've already talked about it extensively. We had our own podcast about the order, so uh, go to that, please. Um, Battlefield Hardline is another game. Um, it's campaign, while it's well acted, um, its story is just bonkers. Um, <laughs> it's just, it, it doesn't really make much sense. Um, no. The graphics are okay, but just really subpar. It just has a very budget feel to it. And due to the fact that I paid a budget price for it, which is kind of appropriate, so in that case, I won't really hate on the game as much, which I'm happy yeah. I didn't even pay $60 for this game. But, um, I, I so I kind of liked that the campaign was short. That was fine. I was kind of actually happy with that. It was of my time there was actually some fun moments in it so i yep. won't lie um even though i hated that like gator chapter it was boring um but i just kind of feel like i hate to say that a developer completely wasted their time on a game but i'm just gonna go all on limbs and say that i think visceral uh wasted their time with that game i mean due to yeah. the fact that i think it was in development for that long yeah. it's i think like, they wasted their time they yeah. wasted their it's time. like it's like it's like it's like this. Battlefield Hardline, it's a good game, but did we need it? No, <laughs> no. And 
I mean, yeah, the beta gained traction, correct? Right? I mean, I didn't play it. I had access to the beta, but it gained traction, right? And it had its reveal. But yep. it's just also a sign that Battlefield can't be Call of Duty where it can annualize. Because Battlefield Hardline was supposed to come out last year. But it got yeah. delayed. Mm-hmm. Even though it's kind of like, not really a delay, but it had it got delayed after that beta, right? So, yep. the only thing we really commend it for is that it had a stable launch. Mostly stable. On Xbox One, I had a little bit of problems. But it had a stable launch. And it was yes. working. Unlike Battlefield 4. Which, I can't believe we're really even commending games for working at this point. Online. Online, I should say. Campaign's fine. It works. But, um, you know, I Battlefield... Hardline is well acted. I like, like, it has the, the actors there. And mm-hmm. I like, especially in the beginning where it really sold me, like, with its style, but it didn't really retain it through all the way through. You know, that was a bit disappointing. But just looking at how long the game took and Visceral's talent, especially, like, you know, we love Dead Space. We have yes. spoken vocally, we love Dead Space. We love all and, three Dead Space games. Exactly. I love all, yes, we love all three. And that was the thing, like, how it spoke to how Visceral was. I think that they make really immersive experiences. And how, I think that's what we're going to get in their Star Wars game. And you, I cannot tell you how excited I am for that. And it, I just didn't even feel like it was there in Hardline whatsoever. Not that I think, especially with a shooter in, you know, a six-hour campaign, that it really had to be that. So maybe my expectations were in the wrong place. But I just think that was really mediocre and lackluster. Like, I didn't really even feel like they were really trying any hard. Really trying hard at all. So, I think that that is definitely a game that has baffled me much this year. It's not, so, it's not a game I outright hate, but just baffled. So, mm-hmm. I like to say that instead of hate. Because I don't hate yeah. Battlefield Hardline. I played it. I somewhat enjoyed it. But it's not a game I fully hate. But it's just, it, it's, 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 it's like- a questionable game. It's like, um, it's like, yeah, when you finish reviewing it, you put your rating at the bottom, like, baffled. <laughs> <laughs> baffled. I will give it, like, I mean, if I gave it a score, it's like a five, no, not a five. Out of, maybe like a six out of ten. It's okay. 6.0, it's just baffled. It's, it's just something that you can just pay maybe 15 bucks for, and it's fine. If it was a Battlefield 4 expansion where it actually even came with a campaign, it would have been fine. But, like, something that came out at the time where it was 60 bucks or even $120 optional, yes, I know. But, I don't know. Um, God, so Hardline was a baffling game. In Order 1886, uh, we've already went into fully depth in our, our own episode yep. about that. You can check it out. But, um, yeah, those were two games that I definitely uh, went over the line with me where, like, I just uh, don't know what we're wrong. Um, <laughs> I mean, it'll be pretty hard to top those two once we get into the fall because the fall is looking very promising. Now, I had said that last year, and um, look where it turned out most of the time. But yeah, we'll we'll like, see with this year. This year we'll is looking incredibly promising with Fallout yeah. Four, freaking uh, Rock Band Four, Four, Metal Gear Solid Five, Five. Mad Max, possibly Just Cause Three, even yeah. though it will get delayed. Uh, <laughs> uh, until, until dawn, dawn which if until dawn I, sucks i'm I gonna cry <laughs> no <laughs> if it sucks you'll cry <laughs> if, what if it's i'll cry i'm gonna like level where it's like you in your head you're like it's okay but like it, it, kill, it comes and goes like order eight i doubt it though I don't know, you can't like, you you would have to try I, it's I, like I please it won't please let until gone be amazing because like i i don't want it to to just come out and it just gets mediocre reviews and I don't know, I, I die a little inside because I'm so excited for that game. Me too. You know? Don't get me wrong. Me too. I'm, you know what? I'm going to, I almost cut, it's like I'm going to the future. I would guarantee you something. I'm going to guarantee that it will be Order 1886 level of like disappointment or anything. I know that game's been a it long time be, coming. Like, or, I don't it think won't it will. Be, you no. say it won't be a disappointment. No. Mm-hmm. You know. I, it, okay. Cuz I'm fine with really I'm fine. Afford two of those honestly, yeah. right? I'm fine if it gets good reviews like 7, like in the 7 like range it like it's good or whatever. That's fine. I think that's fine. But not like what happened with the order where it was getting like or fives got, across like, the board. Threes. I think that's even too low. I think that's harsh like 3? No. That game's like No. It's no, bad. it's the good, order, but yeah. The order but, was consistently getting like fives for the most part, like around the 5 range, like yeah. in the middle 5 out of 10. But yeah, like, exactly. it, like I don't want that with the, with until no. dawn. I'm like I'm fine with it. it. Gets like straight in the seven range. Like it's a good game. Maybe it's a little too short, or you know, 
the, Ooh, like, like, or there's there, like, people or, complaining or, about length or, again. Now or maybe, right or maybe, or maybe there's not enough <laughs> gameplay, but it's just really fun. I don't know, but like, I want the order eight, uh, not the order. I want until dawn to be awesome. I don't want it to be. Like, I don't think it'll be another. Six. You don't want it to be another word. I don't think it will. No, I can't okay, maybe already I, tell you that right now that I don't think it will. Because I will, no. I will be really disappointed and sad and cry and all kind of stuff if if, if, if until dawn turns out to not be good. I don't think it oh. will. No, I don't think. I mean, it's already, it's already, it's already, it's already, it's already off to a good start. Has awesome box art because most games don't have awesome box art anymore. This game has awesome box art. <laughs> yeah, it does. You I know? have to agree with you there. Yes, the, um, the sand glass thing, but with snow and the skull, that's awesome. Um. So yeah, kind of a brief uh, thing of uh, how what we think of 2015 so far. So in conclusion, 2015's been pretty great so far. I I would say. Um, kind yeah. of. Start off this whole start, even though I say that in there was dying light, um, which was great. Um, you know, order was kind of in the early early in the year, and then Battlefield Hardline was in the same time also. But yeah. um, we 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 it's gotten better, and it's only going to continue to get better as the summer yeah. months and fall months and come. And wait, I got I got I just got I just got to drop the name real quick because somebody's going to call us out on it. Oh um, boy, what? Oh, Bloodborne did come out this year. Oh, um, we know, we know, we, we, we yeah, we I know, I know, Bloodborne. I know, I but, mean, but people you didn't, like it, we know that, but people love Bloodborne, it was the highest rated next gen exclusive ever, um, ever. so, you know, movie. yeah, so, that's just something we have to call out real quick, because I know somebody's gonna call us out, like, oh, you didn't talk about Bloodborne, well, no Bloodborne, di- no Bloodborne, no Bloodborne, but we didn't play it, yes, we'll we have that. not we played have the not, game, it's not our we, game, yeah, it's not our kind of game, but it has got amazing game. reviews. So, so good on them. Yeah, that's good. But we got to acknowledge it. We have to at least acknowledge it. You know that that came yeah. out this year. Yeah. So that's also a high. Also, it came out in February. So that's also yes. in the early in the year. So it was kind of a mix in the early year, but it's only gradually continuing to get better. So yep. Um, it's. I don't think it'll be anywhere 2014 level, which was uh, oof. But that's okay. Yes. Um, Kind of something that we'll uh, talk about right now, so then we can pocket it for next week because we're already going OT. So um, yep, pocket that. Yeah, so we're gonna pocket it for next week, where um, somebody is inquiring us to talk about the Nintendo PlayStation that was just recently found. Uh, oh boy! By a Reddit u- by a Reddit user that posted it and uh, has a video up on YouTube. Uh, we will kind of go into that next year, as we'll probably give you the history lesson on that for people who maybe yes. don't know. But if you're gonna, we say it right now, you might look it up, but we'll we'll say it again, and maybe we'll say it again. Put it on, yeah. put it on everyone. So we'll talk about the Nintendo PlayStation next week. And um, somebody acquired us um, mm-hmm. uh, by someone of the name of Wesley, who would who asks, who would you cast in the Life is Strange movie adaptation? Now I don't think I hope in his head he's not thinking this was announced or something like that, but maybe it's something you know, just fan fiction, I guess, right? So I hope that's so. Um, I don't. I hope not in his head that there's going to be a movie of that. But um, he asks, who would he cast of the main characters? He only states one here, but he says he, I would personally cast Ellen Page as the title character. Now I'm already going to shoot that one down, Wesley. Unfortunately, and I would not cast Ellen Page as Max in the in the movie adaptation of. We have your supposed movie adaptation she's of Life is Strange. Old. She's just, yes, she's too old, and I, I quite honestly, in the movies I have seen her, and in the way she is, she is not that character at all. Um, so sorry to shoot that one and crush your dreams, maybe or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, she, she's just um, simply put, not that character. Uh, you, you don't see it. Uh, you can't be. That you can't be a casting director. Just because she yeah. has like the skinny look to her or something that and she's worn like those clothes that you've seen before probably in the game. She's probably worn outfits that are like the exact same thing in her movies. Um, probably that he has seen. Um, I just do not see it, unfortunately. Mm. Um yeah, sorry, we are not gonna go down a rabbit hole. I'm already seeing like names of possibly where I can I'm already thinking right now, but I am not like I'll I'll give you like a legitimate like kinda like small casting list next week for you, Wesley, and I'll I'll cast you a proper Max uh, for next week. It'll probably be somebody that you don't know, but um, um, watch some indie films. I'll say that. <laughs> um, not that it'll, not guaranteed that'll be an indie actress, but um, yeah, yeah, most watch likely some, probably watch, we'll see. Yeah, watch watch some indie films. Ray Lars Ark is awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm, exactly. So um, 
So, yeah, I think that's going to about do it for us this week. Um, we're already going well over OT, talking about a whole lot of stuff uh, on the PlayStation front, just gaming front of yeah. how we thought of the year and all that. So, um, just some small housekeeping stuff. Um, we uh, we are still opening things for possible guests on the show. Um, we had Emmett on a couple times, and um, yes. we have other inquiries, but um, we cannot currently get to those really right now. But we, we still accept some inquiries for anyone that is possible, a candidate to possibly guest um, host, I guess, supposedly. Three hosts in one um, on the PlayStation yeah. session. So if anybody wants to do that, that would be great. Um, we're still open to questions any t- time of the week, any time of the day, really. Um, you know, we still have our stuff on SoundCloud. Right. Uh, so, what else do we have? Um, I guess that's it. I mean, we can just start wrapping up because, like I said, yeah. we're 15 minutes over. Well, hour. over 15. I only promised maybe about 15. So that's gonna about do it for us this week. Everybody have a good week. Enjoy the summer. Yes. I am your host, Andrew Arenas, PSN Double is with my co-host here, uh, Koti PSN uh, by you boys. And we are signing off now. Yes. And the. This is the twenty third episode of the podcast. I don't know if you put the did you put the number at the top? Yes. Yeah. So this has been episode twenty three. Half a year of the PSBS. Very exciting stuff going yes. through. But uh yeah. And like I said, yeah. So uh, thanks for listening and hopefully we'll see you guys next week. And